this VTI that we did two years ago. It's actually the first series that we ever did for a VTI rebuild and sur surprised us. Look, it runs really, really good, right? Yeah. And so his cousin Lance sent us his engine to do the same exact work what we did with Patrick's VTI, which is a rebuild and all the good stuff and remained stock. I mean, we just ported head and manifold and you can see here on the onboard, it sounds really good. Yeah. So now let's disassemble Lance's engine. Okay, first things first, here's our new Facebook account, our Facebook page, and the link will be in the description below. I had to make a new one because my personal Facebook got hacked, so I lost control of the page. You can see we have the basic price list there. This way, you don't have to guess or, you know, DM us just to know the prices. It's already there. The basic works. And also we share, here's a preview of the B20 VTEC, yet another one that we're going to be building. We shared the shed setup there and all the good stuff. So good. And we even port match. We talk about port matching, manifolds, and even the exhaust mod that we did. So hey, I'll just see you guys on the page. So like and follow the page and just comment on every post that I got there. I'll try to reply as usual, just like in the videos here. So a few weeks ago, Lance sent his engine via crate from our AP cargo to us. So it's here. We disassemble, well, actually, we unbox it from the crate itself. There, it's created really huge. Now, here we disassemble the engine, and this engine was on display at their garage, so it was it was not that oily, but there is no rust, so this is fine. So, we disassemble the crank, the pistons, and then, of course, we send the block to the machine shop for resurfacing and honing. And now, here, let's go to the head. Here it is, getting ready for port work. Yes, sir. Okay, now let's go with the carbide first and then later on with the 80 grit. Because this is going to be a stock rebuild with just a ported head and a ported intake manifold, just like Patrick's VTI. That's what we're going to do. So, here, okay, let's time lapse this. All right, we'll make sure the core shift is actually rather equalized a little bit. So, this way, when we go with the 80 grit, it, it's all contoured well. Sorry about that, more bike passing, all right? Yes, okay, now let's go to the exhaust. Okay, now here, still on carbide, trying to get the shape really good. This way, when you go with the 80 grit, it's shaped easy, well, and then on the exhaust, we go with the 120 grit for the final touch, all right? There you go, it's getting closer. We can do this with 80 grit, but it's going to take forever. So we go with the carbide first just to get the initial shaping done, the roughing. And here we are now with 80 grit, getting the shape closer to how we want it. It's getting there, you know. But of course, we got to go with 80 grit first before anything because the carbide finish is actually rather rough. All right, there you go. Okay, now let's go check it. Here, let me put the phone closer or show you guys. There, the initial shaping is almost there. You see the port side walls, it transitions well. All right, now let's go to the exhaust. Here you see we made a few passes on the 80 grit. Now it's shaped up really close, but we gotta go a little bit more because this is exhaust and we want it smoother than usual. I mean, the consistency, of course. There you go, we'll work on the roof. It's getting there you can see it actually you know with even with the time lapse you can see it getting there all right yep now let me show you here now would you look at that yes it's getting there it's not yet done well it looks like it's done but there's a little bit more a few areas that I want to you know contour so this is gonna have a, some more finishing touches now let's go to the block 
As soon as we disassemble the block, we check the bore and it was still good. So we send it for honing and resurfacing. And now it's here. You can see those small rust spots that became black because it got honed. So this one is good now. You can see even the inside or the underside is clean and good. Now it's ready for the OEM Dido or Taiho main bearings. And then we do installation of the crank. I haven't shown this before but here because the block is thoroughly cleaned the solvent and you know detergent i mean sorry sorry soupy water now it's dry and all that so we run the main bolts onto the th onto the main block or the block sorry all the way through oiled up with either w30 or w40 oil it doesn't matter as long as it's engine oil this way the threads are well lubed so when we assemble it we get the torque readings quite clear and you know proper torque read readings right so now we remove it okay there now i use carb cleaner just to make sure the bearing saddles are really clean and wipe it off with shop towel or paper towel there just you know spray on each saddle each of the five now we wipe it Wait, let me get the paper towel or paper tissue there okay you can see we're still gonna catch a bit of dirt. Well, that's just oil. All right. Okay. Now it's time to get the main bearings. It's on the workbench. All right. Let's wipe this clean. All right. Now let's go. Let's go. Now here it is. The Taiho OEM main bearings. Well, and the rod bearings. So we'll use that later. Okay. Now let's grab this and even the assembly loop, the Turco assembly loop that we always use. Let's head back to the block. It started by hand. All right, now we get the assembly lube. Okay, let me unclip the phone and show you guys. It's, this is really nice because it's, you know, I really like it when it's at this point because, you know, it's really clean. It's just ready. Yes, yes. All right, now let's get the crank. Come on. Okay, slowly there. Then the side thrust. All right, then the main girdle hand tight so that it sits in flush real good all right there and now we go with the first step is 18 feet pounds torque this one we don't have the time lapse because it's just gonna be quick and you know not really short but pretty quick okay it's 18 feet pounds torque on the first step all right yes yep i just i love hearing that clicking sound I'm just actually addicted to it. I don't know why. It's just, you know, something that I've always, you know, kind of enjoyed. Yep. Okay, three more. Okay, last three. And then this one. All right. Okay. There. All right. Now the second step is 38 feet pounds mm -hmm. torque. Sorry, now it's gonna click loud. Hear that? It's gonna be loud, right? Oh yeah. Okay, now we time lapse the rest, all right? This way it doesn't get too boring. Now let's put the bolt. Oh yeah, it spins lightly or freely. And this has assembly loop, so that's gonna be, that's supposed to be, you know, a little more sticky. That That's why it's supposed to have more load, but hey, it spins quite free right so now let's turn this as you can see now assembly loop has dripped onto the bore so now we gotta wipe that off and then of course let's head to the head let me show you guys this so we actually left the head this way right so now we're gonna continue doing a few more passes on 80 grit and start and we're gonna see if we should if i should go to 120 grit or this is good enough because the exhaust on the specifically on a soft VTEC, either P2J or even the PO8 head, you have to make sure the exhaust ports are efficient at the low cam and the high cam because the exhaust doesn't have VTEC. So for for a single overhead cam, the exhaust remains non-VTEC. So if you port it big enough so that it works in VTEC, you won't have much of a mid-range or torque. But then if you have if you it too mild you'll have really good torque but flat fall flat on its nose at the top end 
So earlier we cut the intake gaskets and actually port matched this because we made a membership only video that talks about how we port match it and how we cut the intake gasket easily, which can be done by anyone and how we align it. So that's going to be really important. It'll also be on the membership only when we, when we start to do that because we'll have we're preparing video. I already have four, so I need more. And if any of you guys are wondering, we actually did a P2J D16Y8 VDI head porting video last year, and it's here. It's really detailed, and you can check it, and the link will be in the description below, so don't worry. And actually, I'll actually pin it for now on the comment section later, all right? Now, let me show you Patrick's car, the what inspired Lance to send us the engine, and what we rebuilt the first season we did patrick sent us the engine or his engine while they were having the vti repainted and restored here's the it's the violet one obviously and looks really good and that's the thumbnail i used and here they're hanging out at the gas station and here on the sunlight it doesn't look too shabby it doesn't look so bad right here's with the ram air when they're actually street tuning it and here i got a video of Patrick testing out against another VDI, but totally lightened, but still stock cam. Here they are on a dig. It's in an industrial road, so you can see no one passes. It's not, it's not really public. We're testing the out. And the VDI Patrick says that he was testing against. It's actually lightened a bit. So let's see. See? Patrick is ahead by almost two cars or more than one car at least right and here's another run this time i'll be more quiet and let you guys listen to it like okay wow this time patrick actually left the other vta more than two cars at least two cars clear right and now here let's look at the let's listen to the onboard and you can see this has stopped vdi transmission Wonder Lance wants his VTI engine rebuilt and done exactly like Patrick's. He said, him and his dad said they want the identical engine or the identical work that I did for Patrick's engine. That makes sense, right? And you know, this is actually quite important for the locals because a lot of local VDI starts to do inferior mods. And even one time a friend of mine shared a video of, of the P2J head that we were reporting and someone was talking, you know, was going against it and said, you know, they can do better or whatever, right? The reason why we know what happened is because his customer posted the timestamp of how he ran here. Look, here's the public post. Look. 17.871 in the quarter mile. Jeez, that's slower than stock. And I bet you he probably spent the same or more than what we did on the just a rebuild and port work. So why spend that much, right? Or go slow. So hopefully this gives a little bit of awareness or more awareness for the locals that, you know, your VTI is good enough. It just has to be rebuilt or refreshed properly and actually ported well, not just, you know, ported inferior, which is a lot locally. So as soon as we get the pistons ready and the piston rings, we will finish the head. And so for the next one, you can just click here for that.